Hey guys, welcome back to another Redstone video. Today I want to show you a concept for an easy to recreate Amethyst farm. Alright, so let's check it out first and then explain a little bit of my motivation to make this. So it uses uh, three flying machines. They would yeah, break the Amethyst clusters without breaking the budding Amethyst, of course. Right, so we're sending the flying machines from three side. I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit. So once the second one yeah, is back in the station, the third one will be launched. And yeah, this way we can take out almost all the Amethyst clusters. Obviously there are some leftovers. Those are basically yeah, impossible to get with a flying machine. Or yeah, it would be hard to get. Uh, because, well, it would be directly in line of another budding Amethyst. But this type of design is actually surprisingly efficient. So a while ago, while we were playing the Cycroft Blitz, I gave the community a challenge. We wanted to build an Amethyst farm and it had two geodes next to each other. So I gave the community the challenge to make the most efficient geode farm out of those two structures given. Got all kinds of submissions and you can already see the problem with those types of farms. Um, none will look like the other. Most of the time, it's a lot of effort to make the farm because yeah, since the formations can be so different, you need to come up with individual solutions for yeah, all the problems. So here we got the uh, approach, just have pistons directly next to the budding emesis that would uh, break the clusters. Um, that was pretty efficient, but surprisingly, actually the flying machine design was the winner, yielded the most items power. But this was the yeah, winning design here with the flying machines. So recently I had to make another Amethyst shard farm on my own. Of course, it would have been convenient to outsource it again, but yeah, I tried to do it myself. And since the flying machine concept seemed to be the most efficient one and hopefully also not too complicated, yeah, I started making my own farm. The goal was to make it as efficient and use as few flying machines as possible, maybe make it even compact. But quickly I realized that it's actually still quite tedious uh, to make a farm because still again the problem is you need to come up with individual solutions and then I started to think wouldn't it be a lot easier to maybe make something a bit more bulky but that is easy to repeat and then I came up with this design here which uses the same type of flying machine over and over again unlike here where I tried to come up with the most efficient a flying machine for every problem. Yeah, and we got this design here. So it basically uses a structure in the front. There could be up to 12 blocks that is just being pushed by a self-returning flying machine. And that, yeah, worked out pretty well. So it didn't take too long to design the whole farm and we still get yeah, one of the most efficient farms of the flying machine concept. So today I want to give you an easy to follow guide how you could create your own flying machine concept without having to put in too much design work on your own. Alright, so let's make an Amethyst shard farm. Of course we need to find a geode first. This is quite a bit of effort to make a farm. I would recommend to go for a large one of course to get the maximum amount of items. But for the tutorial's sake, I found this one here. This should be about medium size, I think. All right, so of course, one of the first things you need to do is excavate it, so only the budding emesis are left. And as you've seen, the flying machines take a, quite a bit of space. So on yeah, two of the horizontal axes, you need to leave about 15 blocks of space um, next to the last geode, and on top the same, around 15 blocks. All right, so you need to excavate all the blocks around it, the calcite, um, smooth basalt, because the deep slate, and of course you also want to remove the emesis blocks themselves. Here you need to be really careful so you don't accidentally break a budding emesis. Might be even ideal to bring a pickaxe that breaks the blocks a bit slower, so in a safe side, unenchanted diamond or iron pickaxe maybe. So I was a bit generous here with the block removal, it's easy with full commands of course, you don't need to do that much. Okay, so let's start designing the farms. So the first thing I did was to make a layout of all the emesis, or budding emesis blocks that I was not allowed to break. So I basically went out from the yeah, first budding emesis block here on the right by one and made a marker. So basically on a 2D um, plane, I yeah, was placing blocks. They would indicate sections where I couldn't have a flying machine going. So as you can see, 
this here will be the next one. And I'm just gonna do that for all the blocks. So here we basically have a yeah. Four, cluster four. Then we go down one here. And so on. So I do this for all the budding emesis blocks. It's also maybe an option to do it with Lab Medica. You could take slices of the geode and all clone them to the same yeah, spot without having um, yeah, blocks being overwritten true. Okay, but I'm just gonna do it manually. That's what I actually also did in creative because it's not too much effort, but you need to be careful with this to make sure you actually get all the blocks. So here with the medium sized farm, it should still be very feasible, but especially with a large one, you might wanna double check that. So the next thing I did was to place a couple of helper blocks yeah, around those marker blocks. Those are basically the spots where the amethyst um, clusters can grow. So this would be basically yeah, every side of the marker blocks. So fully surround them. And that's basically what we need to cover later. So I'm just gonna fully do this. And then we'll get a couple slime and honey blocks and yeah, start designing the flying machines. It's basically gonna be the only part where you have to be a little bit creative, but I'll also give you a nice guide how to do it. All right. Almost done. Yeah, I can do this without <laughs> making a cut even. Okay. Yeah, that should be all of them. All right, then let's grab some slime. And maybe we need honey blocks, not quite sure, um, but we'll see. Okay, so we need to basically make a flying machine that avoids those blocks and covers the other ones. So what I did, I just yeah, started on one side and I started placing down blocks that I wanted to cover. So we have 12 in total. And we also need this L shape structure because that's what we need for the flying machine. So we basically need a block here that is non-movable to stop the flying machine. The flying machine itself is also three blocks high, so at least always need this L-type structure. Okay, just let's get started. We already have four, six, eight, yeah, ten. Um, cover this one. We have twelve blocks. Okay, so this would be the first segment. Um, can yeah already place maybe a sticky piston as a marker. Flying machine will be built up here. Okay, since we definitely have some blocks touching, uh, we also definitely need the honey. So let's do the second one. So it's just important that we get this, yeah, I think it's like a Tetris L structure somewhere. So this is definitely the case here, since we're going up and over, and then here we already have it. Could be also upside down, or could also be sideways. So just always need three blocks and then one on the side. Okay, so we still have a couple blocks that we can place. Um, so you got two, four, six, eight, nine. Um, if you cover those two, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah, then we got this covered. Okay, then yeah, just gonna place a non movable block here again. And maybe a sticky piston here in front as the next marker. Okay, then yeah, let's continue here. Let's see, just always count to 12, um, get 6, 8, 10, 11. We even go for more. Yeah, 11 is also fine. Okay, um, we might need to flip the flying machine sideways, but it's actually no problem with this uh, type of flying machine. All right, I'm just gonna hmm, probably, probably put it here. Okay, let's make a marker here. Then let's continue. Hmm. Do we have a conflict here with the honey? Might be a bit of an issue. So we already need to think ahead a little bit. So if we place... No, it's actually fine. Okay, we can just place the next honey here. Okay. Yeah, cover it all. Got four, six, seven... Uh, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's actually continue right away. Um, I'm gonna cover next. I think this one is pretty good. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. Yeah, this wouldn't touch. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here we go for more. 10. 11. Yeah, I think that's good. Then honey again. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we need one more anyway. Then we cover the rest here with slime. 
Okay, so this... Oh, you might have an issue with this slime block. So there's still a little bit of work you need to do on your own sometimes. So it's got to be a bit of an issue. Definitely need to use slime here. Could make this out of honey instead. Yeah, let's do that actually. So there's a little bit of work you have to do on your own of designing this, but it's really not too hard. Also those blocks are usually easy to remove. And then we could use slime here. Could also be just four or five blocks and then we definitely need honey here. Okay. So it's really important that basically none of the structures touches the other. Honey and slime, of course, is fine. Okay, now, yeah, we're just gonna place down those anchor points. Um, since we have just the small honey structure, I'm just gonna add one more here on the side. That's a good one. Here we can place the flying machine. That's a good one. Um, got a very large one. Now we're gonna flip this here. Hmm. How many bits do we have? The easy if we... No, wait. Yeah, here's a good spot. And I think we got all the segments covered. Yeah, okay. I'm basically always looking for some L structure. Have. Okay, I think we got all of them covered. Yeah, I'm just gonna place them in the pistons. This for the extension. Basically just an extension here we push. And then we can add the flying machines in the back. So I'm going to show this over here because it's a bit clearer to see. Okay, so flying machine. So we're just going to use slime here because we're using honey there and vice versa. So if a slime structure in front, uh, you want to use honey. Okay, just going to build this up now. So we need slime structure or honey structure like this. Then we add an observer here. Redstone lamp, another observer, and a sticky piston. Okay, then we can add another sticky piston there. And here in the back, you can always use slime or always use honey, whatever is cheaper for you. So you just need to go out three blocks like this, add a note block, and an observer pointing into the sticky piston. This flying machine might look a little bit odd. But it's actually kind of important that the detection sites of the observers are covered. Because it could happen that while your flying machine is crossing one of those budding emesis blocks, that you have one of the buds is growing at the wrong time, activates your observer at the wrong time, and your flying machine um, would get stuck or fail. It would be a lot of work to fix this. That's why the flying machine uh, that I designed, I had to make sure this would never happen. So but just having a block on top here at the detection site, this is prevented. Okay, so this is already a whole flying machine. So all you need is so on the other end, um, some non movable blocks, droppers would be one of the cheapest options. So yeah, I'm using crying obsidian because it's a pretty neat looking block. Also, it's a light block, so it's already spawn proof, but it's quite convenient. So this would be the flying machine, easy to launch. And of course, here in the front, this could look a bit wild. And this here take out yeah, all the Amazon clusters. I forgot one part. <laughs> this thing in the back also needs to be stopped. Okay. In case you make the same mistake and your flying machine took off, it's easy to fix. Just place another non movable block here temporarily. I'll remove this observer. Place, uh, remove the redstone lamp. Okay, fly, flying machine back. Put the redstone lamp back and place an observer. And then finally in the back, another non movable block. Okay, now the flying machine does what it, what it should. So the good thing about this type of flying machine is that it also doesn't use QC. So that means you can flip it however you want. So this makes it a bit easier to design here the front part. Just gonna show you how you could yeah, flip it upside down, for example. So I'm using slime here because we got honey in the front. Just gonna do it like this. Server, that's the lamp, server, sticky piston, sticky piston, three more slime blocks, node block, server, and non movable block here. And here we can do it sideways, so we've got slime in front, that's why we use honey now. Same type of structure. Server, that's the lamp, server, sticky piston. Oops. And here can always use slime or honey, it really doesn't matter. All right. 
Okay, then just want to do that yeah, for all of the front segments you want to push. And then we just need to make sure that we have um, another obsidian wall here in the back, a non-moveable block wall in the back. And then we just need to launch all the flying machines at the same time. So I place the crying obsidian wall here, but two blocks out on the other side. Of course, this might be a bit expensive in case you don't have a bartering setup. So you could also use droppers if you want. But yeah, like the crying obsidian, also light source, so it already makes part of the farm yeah, spawn proof. That's why I'm using it. But droppers would also be fine. Okay, now we need to wire up the launching sequence. Um, so it is also a bit of a part you have to design yourself. It's kind of important that all the flying machines launch at the same time. So I was thinking we can just yeah, place redstone dust on those full blocks here. Um, sometimes maybe a target block is useful, or some glass wiring. You can see it useful here. So we basically just power yeah, the block here, which powers the node block, which the observer detects. So that's the idea here. Okay, already covered a lot. Um, let's move this one higher. Then we can also go up here. Mm. Well, maybe it would have been. Yeah, it's okay. Just need to make sure we stay within the 15 of the of the redstone dust. It might even be a good idea if we send our initial signal into this block. Then we should be able to reach the rest. Yeah, I mean, doesn't need to be coming from the same repeater. You can also use two repeaters and, and split it up into sides. Um, but I guess you got the idea. So you need to probably come up with your own system to yeah, get all the wiring done. It shouldn't be too hard. Okay, then power this. Maybe in some cases a target block might even be useful. Who knows? Technically, it's also possible to place the non movable block here and power that instead. So I'm just going to use that here, I guess. That's quite convenient. I think we, yeah, get them all. Should place it here on top. But yeah, looking good. So before you actually launch the flying machines, you definitely want to remove the stuff here in front, those temporary blocks. Don't need those anymore. There we go. Um, what you can also do is to fill in the gaps now here between the sticky blocks. But again, be like glass or cotter or something like that. You just have a smooth wall. Also, if some items fall on the honey blocks, um, they won't. Yeah, they basically just <laughs> fall down here on this side. Just gonna fill all the gaps around. Okay, so now it's getting exciting. You might want to double check again that no budding M assist would be in the way of any sticky block structure. Might be a good idea. Would also actually recommend to design the farm and creative, of course. You can always take a lightmatic of the yield structure and copy it into creative. Okay, what also would be helpful is, is to check which um, of the Clusters we actually take out, so I'm just gonna quickly set the game rule random tick speed really high, so they're all fully grown. Yeah, a bit laggy because we got a normal Minecraft world, empty world, and faster. Okay, so this might make it also a bit easier if we set the random tick speed to zero now, because then we actually also see which one are already taken out if we design the next side, so you don't need to do it again. Okay, so here comes the big moment. I haven't tried this out. Let's see. Hopefully it works. Okay. Yep. All the flying machines get launched. And here I placed a note block instead of a redstone lab. Okay. Mistakes happen sometimes. Yeah, sometimes they're also lucky in case something goes wrong. Since the flying machines are not really touching each other. Okay, all good. Okay, so we're done with one side. Now we do have, have to do this 
twice again. So it's still a bit tedious to make a farm like this. Um, so we're just gonna start the same way again. Make the marker blocks. Okay, just gonna go out like two blocks across the side here and do this all over again. We would still be <laughs> in MC Edit uh, classic times. Somebody could probably make a Python script to convert the 3D structure into like the 3D uh, planes instead, but. Gotta do it manually, I guess. Or oh, as I said, you use like Medica um, and take single slices or something like that. All right, I'm gonna quickly do it and yeah, just build up the second flying machine real quick. Oh, one more thing you can also, of course, if you have it like this, leave out some of the yeah, MSIS clusters that have already been taken care of. So if you place your uh, indicator blocks, you only need to cover the ones that still have MSIS clusters in front. So, for example, yeah, here on top, you definitely don't need any blocks. They would take those potential ones out. Um, so that's why you also want to launch the flying machines later in order. All right. Oh, and one more thing. So luckily, we don't have the case here. But in the previous one I made, I had a case where yeah, some spaces were completely surrounded. So if we had another budding emesis block here, would not be possible to make a small flying machine yeah, for those blocks here in the middle. So this might happen to you that you have this case and then you just um, leave this empty. Okay, so I got the next one yeah, built and wired up in the same way and put the uh, ceiling walls around. Now, of course, we can't launch both the flying machines at the same time because they would crash into each other. So we have to do that in a sequence. I think one of the easiest ways is if you just add one more observer here to this front part of the first flying machine like this. And um, basically once the flying machine returns to this position, it would power a redstone line. So I'm just gonna put another uh, block in front here. Then we can just run a redstone line over here. Just gonna put down one more observer. Two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. One repeater here. And connect it. Okay, then we can also try it out. Oh, let's actually du double check so we really made no mistake again. That's something I definitely did when I did this the first time. Definitely easy to make a mistake here. Um, yeah, it looks like none of the budding emesis would be taken out. Okay, so we can launch this again. This flying machine first. And now the second one. of them launched, that's the good news. And then we have to, yeah, to cover the rest, make another one from the top. And you're probably already tired by now, so you need to be extra careful to not make any mistakes with the marker blocks, especially from the top. That's where I made the, the most mistakes the last time. But yeah, just be extra careful now. Maybe take a break, do it the next day. Really, yeah, careful here. But you'll probably also need the fewest flying machines now on top because there's not that many clusters left over at this point. So, for example, here, yeah, the whole side, we actually don't need any anything breaking them anymore. So, there's yeah, only a couple spots we actually need it. So, yeah, it's quite minimalistic. We can probably get away with using three or four flying machines. And it's going to be the same type of flying machines. So, you can not only rotate them. Um, yeah, every direction on this axis, you can also flip them by 90 degrees vertically. So, but yeah, first we need to do the same thing. Mark out the front part that will be pushed, so the limit of 12, and also at some point you need this L structure. This would be a good candidate where we can push down. Can we place the normal blocks? We've got four, seven, eight. Is it even worth trying to get up another one? Probably not. Mm. Yep, now go for the next structure. Four, seven, definitely good. This one, ten, 
It should be good. A bit unfortunate. I definitely need to cover those two. See if you can make that work. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Sweet. And then we have one more. Um, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. <laughs> need one more flying machine. Nevertheless, I'm going to show you at least once how to build the flying machine this way. Well, it's just really the same. Just rotate it. Oh, here probably want to place the non movable block first. Oh, wait, actually, you want to place the node block first. And if you place a block under it, node block would update. Ah, ah that's a bit of an issue. <laughs> um, how are we going to do this? Might want to place the piston last. Yeah, like this. See the um, observer immediately updates because the node block has a block below which changes the tune it plays so that's why the observer reacts that's why we want to place the piston last okay kind of was worth it actually show you how to build the machine this way okay so i did the part here on top of the flying machines now we need to do the bottom part so the simplest would be if we just have a floor of hoppers that point to one yeah storage or chest uh in case you want a little bit lag friendlier and cheaper Water item collection um, really depends now if you still have to use honey blocks here at the top. Um, so normally the flying machines shouldn't touch, so it shouldn't matter if maybe one of them yeah, gets launched back a little bit earlier. Um, so what I mean actually is if I place signs here now to stop the water flow, so one of the flying machines will be sent back up uh, one block earlier because they can't push down the signs here while here they fly down to the non movable block. Um, yeah, so in most cases it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, you could also do a workaround, for example here, instead of using the signs, you could also just cut out a couple more blocks, place the water there. Then you can just have the signs here and all the items fall down. You can have the further water stream a bit lower. So would be an option. So yeah, you might need to improvise a little bit, but I gave you some ideas uh, how to do this. Okay, so I decided to just put signs in the middle because there's really no reason why I shouldn't do it. And you also don't need to like seal the top of the farm um, because it's quite unlikely that actually some items would land here yeah, on top. Okay, then we still need to like power uh, the flying machines. So of course you're gonna just take an output from the second flying machine batch, I guess. Uh, you can just add an observer. I guess it can be facing upwards. Yeah, should be no problem. Then we just run redstone line over there. Mm, goes up quite a couple blocks. Probably should count. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Let's see if you can make it. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, just one repeater here. Should be fine. All right. We launch it. Yeah, why not? So one last test. You also probably want to double check once again. No budding M assist is taking out the flying machine. And then the farm is almost done. We just need a clock in the end. Let's do it a bit quicker. Yep, it's looking good. All right. So of course, um, this whole dilemma at which interval will you launch the flying machines? And I already made a whole video about this topic. So the, the correct answer is every 167 minutes, you want to launch the flying machines to get the optimal output. Okay, I'm also gonna show you how you can build a nice compact 167 minute clock. Okay, so you definitely wanna build it next to your input for the first flying machine. Um, I'm already gonna place torch here so this will be the output that activates the whole thing all right so how do we do this so we need 
Parrot up pointing into that. Then a drop in front. And a hopper pointing into this. Then a redstone dust here. Sticky piston. Right there. And the same on the other side. There we go. And a redstone block here. And this dropper we want to put in exactly 41 items. Okay, then we can get a note block. And place two hoppers pointing into each other right next to it. So like this. Then here we place the next uh, paradise. Now we place redstone dust here on top. Then we add sticky pistons again and redstone block and here we can add the on off switch so just a lever so now it's turned off still need to put in items into this hopper and we need to put in exactly 305 which means four full stacks and 49 so like that okay then yeah soon as i trigger this um, it's gonna start the clock and in 167 minutes yeah, this will launch the flying machines. Just a little technicality, um, those repeaters here you don't want on two or three ticks. You can have them on a short pulse like this or you just put them on four ticks. Otherwise the flying machines will yeah, not work properly or the launch sequence. Okay, just put them on four ticks then you should be on a safe side. But if you want, you can also not use a clock, just saying, and only harvest the farm Yeah, in case your crystals have grown. Then it's completely fine if you just press a button. Okay, so let's actually see this working. This is quite fun. Alright. Yeah, items landing. The water here, pretty good. You can see that's why we need the blocks here. Some land on the honey. Here's the next ones. can also now check how much items we actually get a medium sized farm like this and now the final flying machines maybe let's speed it up a little bit okay let's check the output we're all still in the hopper and trickle at least we got five stacks almost five stacks Okay, so I guess that's pretty good for a farm of this size. I think the larger ones can also yield 10 to 12 stacks even, but yeah, it's pretty good. So per hour, this would be roughly, so this is roughly 300 in one batch. Not all of them have grown actually after 167 minutes, only roughly like I think 70% of them. So yeah, we get roughly 70 to 80 shards per hour of a farm of this size. Alright, so this was a bit of a lengthy tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. I think it's kind of hard to make a tutorial on those geode farms because they're all a little bit different. But I think with this method it shouldn't be too complicated. Still quite some effort, but not too complicated to make a farm of your own. Alright, thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!